today I'm uh I moved the wheels to up out here on the bench so both sides can dry and I'm just using my touch-up brush to touch up where these sticks were and uh, I've already touched this wheel up one of them was right here and I'm using the the hardened thin paint it hasn't gone hard yet that's the mix paint this will be like rubber in a few days it won't be usable but this is what I use to touch up because then once it cures it's the same same as uh, as if I sprayed it and you won't see it you know it's just this little lip edge and uh, it won't won't uh, be visible so I just go around and touch up so like right there I don't know if that shows up or not but it's all it takes so uh, right here dab my brush again takes very little to touch up the so I'm just gonna go around and do that and that way this stuff will cure just as hard as the the paint on the rim and then you can see a little something here and I'm not worried about this you don't see this but you know I'm touching stuff up so I'll touch that up I'm not concerned about how pretty that looks more than I am concerned about the protection of uh, rust and the tire sealing good on the on the seam here so i'm just going to go around like i say and touch up any little marks and hopefully this paint will still be liquid when i get the tires it, it'll last about a week 10 days i added a little extra reducer to it after i dumped it in there and that tends to extend the life a few days and you can put it in the refrigerator and that'll give you even a few more days but eventually that's going to go hard because it's got the hardener in it and uh, i think i showed it in jars it turns to like jelly like a thick you know like jello but you can't break it apart so anyway i'm going to get go around touch up all those spots i'm going to leave the wheels here on the bench so they get nice dry time see how you don't get the overspray and look in the back because this was still tacky when I sprayed the other side so it kind of just melts in and uh, you don't get that overspray if you let this get too tack up too much then you see the overspray the key is turning them over and shooting them again before they tack up and yeah I've hung them on pipes and sprayed them and uh, it's just easier to do it the way I did it I've done it both ways and this is the way I did it is the way I prefer to do it. Everyone has their own unique, probably, way of doing it, but that's the way I like to do it. And uh, so, anyway, all right, see, so like this, you know, I'll touch that up. I'm, I'm going to do one wheel at a time. So, th this is the inboard side. I made sure I paint the inboard side first so, because this is the side that's important that you want to look your best. And uh, those hubcaps, you know, are going to tear this surface up so I might put some plastic dip on the burrs of the hubcaps I did that on the Catalina and that really helped that was a tip I had from a from a viewer to put plastic dip on them and uh, it totally works the hubcaps don't fly off and it doesn't doesn't mar up the wheel so bad all right let me go around and touch everything up here there we go they're all touched up now and I'm going to leave them on the table here because it's a little warmer up here um, yeah, it has cooled off outside. It's not in the mid 70s or 80s or near 90 anymore. It's back to normal, which is, you know, low 60s. I think yesterday it did get up to like 69. It was a beautiful day yesterday, but um, today I don't think it's going to get out of the upper 50s. And the nights have been getting down in the mid 30s. And I thought I'd just set them up here where it's a little warmer and I have the heat set on 72 in the garage. I've just been leaving it there since I brought the wheels in. I set it up and just left it there overnight and everything. So that way these will be cured. Hopefully by Friday we can have some tires on those wheels, I'm hoping. And uh, if not Saturday, but we'll see how it feels. It feels pretty, like I say, it feels pretty good. Like they could go on a 
tire machine right now, but I just want to let them dry. You know, it's acrylic enamel and that stuff truly takes about 30 days to cure to where you can buff it and really work it. But it takes, it takes a good 60, 90 days for it to really, really, truly, I mean, really get hard and be durable. While I was touching things up, I got all the jack parts down to make sure there wasn't any marks on the wires. And this one, I, obviously I had it wrapped around that end there, so I just touched that up. Just so you don't see where the wire was. But yeah, all that's looking pretty darn good. I think um, today I'm going to clean the visors up. I got the rubber things for the bottom of the doors finally came. And uh, I got the things for the rockers. So I'm just going to do a lot of little stuff. I might clean up the visors and reinstall them, get the seat belts in. I'm just going to putz today. Just work on what I feel like the last few days have been pretty hectic with getting these wheels. And I, I fix lawnmowers and stuff too. So yeah, I had this that I had to go through. And it had been sitting for a few years. It's It's new. Top of line Toro, but yeah, the carburetor was gummed up and it needed some attention, so I went through it too. Before, after. Yeah, it just needed a good cleaning up. I'm assuming this is a driver's one because the Top part, you know, this part would be the top if this is on the passenger side is a lot dirtier than that side. So that's kind of why I'm assuming that's the driver's one. We'll put it in and see. I think they're both identical, so I really don't think it matters. The visors are in. They all work the way they're supposed to. This one, the screw threads are kind of stripped out so see it doesn't tighten up in there so I'll get a bigger allen screw just a slightly bigger one maybe a metric or something just something that's big enough where I can tap it and not have it look like it's got some big hunking thing in there but yeah I got this for the visor so when I go to cruises it tells you how to start the car so that way, if when I get in the car I and I can't remember how to start it, I can pull the visor down. Tells you how to start it cold. Tells you how to start it warm. And if it doesn't start, how to start it. Yeah, there we go. Pretty slick, huh? <laughs> I just, you know, I'll probably keep it in the cardboard sleeve that it came in and just put it on there when I go to car cruises and stuff. I just think it's kind of neat. But we'll get that that straightened out so that can do what it needs to do. But there we go. All installed. While the car's jacked up, I'm just going around like putting in these rubber rubber uh, drains that go on their, you know, the rocker panels and the doors. And uh, let me move down here a little bit. Yeah, so there's those. And then the ones on the bottom of the doors. Sorry about the shadows for my trouble light, but that's just life right now. But let me see if I can, uh, that the bottom of the doors of this thing look nice. They look as good as the hood and the, or better than the, some of the body, but yeah, they're, they're uh, all in both sides. There we go. Just thought I'd show that why I had the the car up. I also have new grommets like those for the for these are where the seat bolts are. Do they? Let me see if they show up in there. Yeah, they do. So you can kind of. Kind of see them. There you go. So uh, I'll put the grommets on them and we'll call it. Uh, and I don't think I need to take the seat back out, so I might as well put the grommets back on, right? And then uh, those seat belt holes are right there. 
So I got to jab a needle through them and uh, burn the holes through so I can put the seat belts in. Again, I still got to fix that transmission sump where the gasket leaks in that one corner. It, it hasn't dripped anything all, all uh, winter. But I see some fluid on the cross member, and that's it drips into the off the back uh, right corner of the pan into the cross member, and uh, so I definitely need to drop the sump and and reseal it for the transmission, which is no big deal. It'd be good anyway. To flush the fluid out a little bit. So uh, and I'll grease the U joints because my. U joints have grease fittings in them too, so while the car's jacked up, I can grease all the fittings too. All right, let me uh, get out from under the car here. I was just kind of showing what I can while I'm under it. These are the seat grommets for the floor pan, and I'm gonna put these in, and I'm gonna put these flaps on, but I think I'm gonna use the new ones because this is just kind of you know, that's the side you see, and they're pretty, pretty worn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some sheet metal and make new identical to these. And I have left over those staple things from the cat whiskers. And these are essentially the same thing. So I can drill holes through the sheet metal and the rubber and bend those over those, like what was on the cat whiskers. So I'm going to make new metal and put the put the new ones on. That's the only difference between the two is the original ones have these metal things that the reproductions lack and like I say we'll, we'll make up a set of those and get these installed because these got to go back on before the tire and I got a whole ton of plastic rivets here so I can uh, because the plastic rivets were pretty much all finished too so I I'll replace them also. All right, let me get these in and then uh, maybe I'll work on these. There we go. Those are in. And the one that goes up in that hole is in. Everything's looking good. I haven't shown the underneath of this car in a while, have I? Well, I did some of it, but let's go up at the engine end and have a look. Oh man, crawling around on the ground again. So the sump, I think I over tightened the, the gasket on the transmission sump. It leaks right around this corner right, right here. And uh, so I'll just take the sump off and I'll use some sealer on it in place of uh, a gasket, I think. Here's the vacuum modulator yeah it all looks pretty good nothing appears to be dripping other than that one corner of the transmission sump there and uh, maybe it's coming out of that breather. I can, you know what? I can see a little fluid coming out of the breather there. Maybe that's where it, well, I doubt it unless I had it over full. I think I'm pretty certain it's a sump that leaks right here because the gasket's kind of pushed out. I don't know if that shows up there or not, but that gasket, I just over tightened it. I can't see the viewfinder, so I have no idea what I'm what I'm videoing under here. But anyway, yeah, there we go. Everything's looking really good. We'll grease up all the fittings on the chassis. All right, time to get out from under the car. So I was going to put these new rubber flaps on to replace these old ones here, and the new ones didn't come with the model. And I cut the, just used my side cuts and cut them and took a screwdriver and pulled the staples out. They're much like these staples right here that hold that cat whisker on. So anyway, I clamped the new rubber to the old rubber because I could see the staple holes in it. And then I just took my hole punch 
and punch so they'll hopefully they'll all match up and I can just put this on hammer it closed and then put the staples on and I'll give the outside a quick repaint I gave the the inside was in really good shape it still had paint in it but I uh, gave it a quick bead blast on the inside and shot some paint in there just to make sure it's protected and then I'll reshoot this when I'm done because I'm going to mess it up more putting those staples in I'll give that a mask and a fresh paint and we'll do the other one and get them on the car see how that is oh like that I thought this is up more reproduction garbage you know that doesn't fit so, and I held these up, new ones up to the original ones, and they're exactly the same. So I was suspecting, no, it can't be, can't be that off when they're identical when I held them up. And then I brought the original one over, and you can clearly see the set in it. And it's just like the original, so that's just the way it was. It's not the fault of the reproduction. But that, that went in there good. It's, you know, to protect the... The chassis is right here. The fender, inner fender ends about right there. And then that little bit's a chassis. And I think it just protects it from the stuff hitting it from the road. And probably stuff hitting the undercarriage. But there we go. That's one in, one to go. And there's the passenger side all installed. This side isn't as bad. This side fits a lot better. Because there's the other side, there's a bunch of brake line stuff there. And, this has to be a little forward. So they're probably identical mirror images and one just fits better than the other. Well, I got four of the five. They still haven't got the fifth tire because they dropped the ball on ordering them. They put um, adhesive weights instead of weights on this side. This side, I didn't care if they put weights on the wheel. The other side, I really like think it looks nicer without them so they put the adhesive ones in the inside of the wheel part if it needed it that one doesn't look like it needed it so let's get the white walls cleaned all uh blew off the white walls and get them on the car and uh they didn't have these either so i had to uh chase around for some of them too Tire store doesn't have valve stems for these wheels. Wouldn't read about it, would ya? Yep, all clean and ready to go on the car. Yeah, it looks so much better with white walls on it than those nasty old black walls and the wheels when they're all crummy looking. I'm gonna wait to put the wheel covers on. I'm gonna let the paint dry maybe a week and I'm gonna put plastic dip on the burrs of the wheel covers. I might do that yet today so that can dry. And uh, then we'll put the, it's still jacked up too. I gotta put the seat belts in. I'm gonna do that right now. But I just wanted to get the tires on and uh, what a difference, day and night. Eh, you can barely see it, but I did get the carpet marked out to, for the holes for the uh, seat belts. So I'm gonna get my soldering gun and melt some holes through and we'll get them installed. Yeah, I do have other tips for this thing, but I'm too lazy to find them and put them on. This does the job just Jim dandy. The front seat belts are in. I thought about dyeing the material, but the type of material it is, I talked to some people and yeah, the dye will come out in your clothes. And my only other option is just stitch on new, uh, stitch new belting, which I may do in the future. And the front seats are a little slightly faded, but they don't look objectionable. They look okay. So I'm just gonna live with them for now. And uh, so the back, rest of the front seats to hold up here so hopefully they get on the ball and get this thing so i can finish this up it you know they're sending another cover for it there we go sitting on four brand new brand spanking new white wall tires they look awesome
I'll get the hubcaps on in a few to, like a week or so. Tomorrow I might plastic dip them. And uh, I'm going to let that dry a few days too. I want the wheels, the paint on the wheels to dry a little bit before I go shoving hubcaps on it. And I got to oil and undercoat the inside of the trunk compartment. And then after I do that, then I got to put the, the drains that go there. And then all the drains are one on each side, but I want to oil an undercoat so the oil doesn't swell. I'll put the oil in there yet tonight and then uh, can drip out overnight. And tomorrow I'll spray grease it and, and uh, get it ready to undercoat. Yeah, it's moving along, that's for sure. It's looking good. And I got the spare wheel sitting there ready for when they get the fifth tire. Yeah, that bit of a fiasco when you order stuff. That's what they are, the tires, if you're interested. They were $83 a tire. They sold them a little bit cheaper than, than uh, what that says on them. But there we go. One more tire for the spare. That'll give me a chance to um, get that undercoated in there. Yeah, it's going to look amazing with those hubcaps on it. I also picked up some veneer a, lot, a couple feet about a week ago, and I just today I picked up some stain. We'll get that all done up so we can get those door panel pieces on too, those emblems. And I got some buffing stuff out so I can start thinking about buffing paint here pretty soon. I'm just going to give it a quickie. Just kind of take some of the few spots of orange peel, a couple little specks of dirt need to be sanded out. And then we'll buff the paint and hopefully they get the chrome plater gets this stuff. Still has all this stuff. Galaxy, the 500 emblems. And he has the turn signal stock still. Yeah, I took that back, took that in, he told me six weeks. I took it in December. It's been six months. <laughs> and uh, the everything on it's been, you know, I try and stay ahead of the game and get the stuff ordered so I have it when I need it. But everyone seems to drop the ball or something, and then I end up having to wait on everyone else. But anyway, we're we're moving along. I'll get the... Like I say, I'm not driving it anytime soon, so if I do it, it, it looks good with those wheels and white walls. Well, we can drive it without the hubcaps once or twice if need be, but this, this is why I'm not putting the seat in. See these, see these sharp ears and they're tabs part of this frame. And I'm afraid if I put this over and on and bend them over, and then I bend them back and bend them over again. They're going to start getting weak and may break off. So, And I don't want those to poke through the, the bat bottom of the seat on the car. So that's kind of why I'm just kind of not doing anything with this. Why I was just sitting there. So who knows when that, I just figure I might as well keep it clean. But who knows, you know, those, those pointy things, if they go through this, you know, or tear this up. Then I'm kind of SOL, so I'm just not going to put it in until I get the new one. And they're telling me the end of April, so it'll probably be the middle of June. And uh, But, yeah, and I found a set screw that works in the sun visor, so that's all tightened up now. And I'm going to make these things that sit down in there. I got the stuff to make them. So i got to make a little pattern out of paper and cut them out and get them in so it's it's actually been making pretty good progress on it call it a day if you like the video definitely hit the like button if you want to see this car finished up see those wheel covers on there with those white walls and this thing sitting outside on a beautiful sunny day subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching my video